and she said, uh, I've just read your book, and um, she said, I, I'm not sure I know what to do about it. And what do you recommend? And I got this question on my book to her, and I said, you beats the hell out of me. I mean, you know, you, you, should, you, should, you know, tell the story. I mean, you've got to just get the story out as best you can. But um, she said, I, 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 I don't know what to do. And she said, it, I have to figure something out fairly soon. And I, I said, why is that? And she said, well, she said, I have MS, and I'm, I'm not going to last that much longer. And what should I do? And I don't know what came up with me, but I said, I am not the person to ask that question. You go into the woods, wherever they are, and ask the trees. If you kill them, then there's going to be less oxygen. Because they breathe in carbon dioxide and they breathe out oxygen. <laughs> Trees are the lungs of the planet. Sherry, tell me, is that tree dead or alive? <laughs> well, you're the scientist, but it looks pretty dead to me. Do you have two eyes? <laughs> yeah. You don't need to be a scientist. Oh. Uh... So, you know, I'm the only Does Charles E. Little in Placidas in Mexico. So. And I said, well, I want to know about uh, trees that are, that are dying and forests that are afflicted by air pollution, stuff like that. He says, Mr. Little, none of that's going on. He says, you're a goddamn fool. And I hung up, a young woman. And she said, I've just read your book. And she said, uh, Mr. Little, um, um, do you think I should, should quit my medical training and, and do something to help save the trees? Trees? Trees, trees are what like make, makes the world go around. They give us oxygen, like what else? I love trees. No, I didn't move her to say that. I mean, the, the, the issues did, you know, what I was reporting on did. So there is that kind of, there is that kind of reaction out there, to, you know, to, to get. They're beautiful, they provide oxygen. It brings color in this world. Trees? Trees. Like in bark and... Yes. We like to hug them. Nice for sure. Trees are great. Why? Because they look like me. <laughs> what does that mean? They're big and tall and they give to everything that comes to them. Oh. They give their fruit, they give their leaves, they give hugs. So come hug a tree. You know, trees, <coughs> this, is, this is sort of God's plan, trees. <laughs> God created you in his image. A tree is just a tree. God loves you. you he created you. Uh, remember, God loves you, okay? Honey, you can chop down the tree, but the Bible says your soul is forever. But what happens when you when 50% of the of the existing the existing forest on the on the planet are are gone? I mean, you can, and and what happens when you have all these other aspects of of of, of whatever it is that is killing trees, whether it's um, acid rain or <clears throat> global warming or all too many uh, too many beetles and too many gypsy moths and all of those things that kind of all work together that that God's plan doesn't work anymore you've 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 thrown a monkey wrench into it and so there isn't that balancing anymore so you have to figure out some way to to make up for that and uh, that's the work, as I said at, <clears throat> at the end of my book, that's the work of a hundred years. I think like trees should like, shouldn't be cut down, but, um, and they should just be left in the environment because they provide like oxygen for us and everything. And he says, whenever, whenever things get bad, too much CO2, the trees uh, respond to that and they, they expand, they grow. Um, and so that takes up the CO2. And, and so everything sort of 
remains in balance. I think trees are awesome. I'm from Canada and we're full of trees. Uh, did you know Canada is number one in logging in the globe? I also knew that and that's too bad. Horrible things were happening uh, in the Smoky Mountains, uh, uh, Mount Mitchell, which is a special mountain of my childhood. <laughs> and uh, how all the trees were, were dying up there, and how he had found out about it, and how uh, he was beginning to tell people about it, and how people were, were trying to shut him up, um, and how people had taken away his research grants. Over there were people who were doing independent research, in, in, independent of government funding, or independent of industry funding. that not only was this a big story and a, and, a, and a scary story, but it was a story that was, you know, animating some, I don't know, Brock was a real patriot. You know, he was going against the grain, you know, for, for reasons of patriotism. One can hardly overstate the courage of people like that. Uh, I love trees. Trees are, uh, trees are man's best friend. And, um, they support us in a lifelong adventure, and you know we should support them. Wow! What's in your right hand? Chopsticks. <laughs> Trees. <laughs> Supporting me, eating. I think of my childhood and how they were a source of fun and adventure and food and shade and just and, and history because. Oh my gosh, the, you know, I remember when my next door neighbor planted a, a tiny little sapling and I go back there now and I realize a lot of time has passed. Converting your car. Converting it how so? To run on vegetable oil. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the flux capacitor? It's the flux capacitor. Right. I see the goal in this is to get the rednecks and the uh, truckers who don't appreciate trees very much. And so I try to keep the uh, environmental aspects away from the business, believe it or not. The other truck says you trees, love trees. I get to build my house out of them. A lot of environmental leaders don't, don't believe that, the, that telling the truth will make things happen. What they believe is that, is that, is that telling people that something is going on and this is what you should do about it is what makes things happen. Mm. Well, they also make shade and they keep moisture in the ground and it prevents LA from turning into a desert. What a car do you drive? <laughs> it's a Prius. Great. That they want to run on vegetable oil because they want to keep the money in the U.S. economy. There's right. people that want to run on vegetable oil because they don't like our money going to the Arabs or they want to support the U.S. farmers. Right. Other people want to do it because it's, it's clean air or environmental. And by us taking any kind of an environmental position, we're limiting getting something environmental done. So our intentions are very environmental, but to accomplish something, instead of getting a pat on the head from another environmentalist, we're trying to stay nonpartisan, stay neutral, and whatever your reason, we're just trying to get the cars converted and get them out there. We are officially a vegetable oil car. Ready? Can you smell that, Sherry? Yeah! It smells like vegetable oil. We as humans and human society, we, we have the same kind of thing. We have to roll rocks up the hill all the time and they slip out of our grasp and they, and they fall down again. And we have to go down and pick them up. But we, we can do that. We can do that over and over and over again. And because we're human, we find joy in the task. And that's, that's the idea of work, of, of good work, which is kind of a, a Buddhist thought. And so if the, if, the, if, if, if the outcomes are in doubt of what we do, or if somebody scoffs at what you do, well, that, that doesn't, that's not going to help. That's ridiculous. You do it anyway, because that's what you must do. That's part of being human. And if you, and if you care, about the planet and you want to make the planet well, you do that no matter what the outcome should be. And that's what that's where the salvation must lie. That's the way to do right by the planet.